Okay, new testimony. Wanaskai intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Okay, well, okay, well I already know what to counter uh, that with. <laughs> yep, same. That's uh. The, that's that one was obvious. Autopsy. Yeah, that's yeah. the autopsy report. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? <laughs> In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. At least this one was uh pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, so it is, uh, which calls okay, I'm sure. Okay. Good thing I it was right because I also didn't say it beforehand. Yeah, um, I thought it would be a big deal because I mean, we would just load up from the beginning of from the last one. Yeah. You say she stabbed him again and again, but you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. Okay. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. W what do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states the death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Ah, ah, you're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk. He's my <laughs> hero, really. What about my objection? No one noticed? <clears throat> well, witness. You got the crime scene set, right? Why does she have that? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now, I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splatter blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. A red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. That's stupid. Okay. <laughs> Yep, save right now. Not he actually it's not even what I was trying to do. I and mean, as soon as I got on the menu, I'm like, oh yeah, but I do need to do this. <laughs> um one. Wait, what? Red what? muff? What? what the hell's a red muffler? Yeah. Um Is it the crime scene photo against that? I'm like, what the I guess a red muffler. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. She... There's a reason she got fired, you know. Wh what The suspect was not wearing a scarf or yeah. muffler of any kind. Oh, it's like a scarf. It's like a okay. scarf, yeah. That's what I, that's what I was huh. thinking. I, I was confused. Yeah, like, she's, like, the... she's not wearing any sort, anything like that. Yeah, I'm like, the, the f hell? Yeah, the suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself, with this photograph. Huh? But, but that can't be! Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations, 
Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. <laughs> Bullshit. I don't know. I had nothing. I, I, I don't know. I felt like words needed to come out of my mouth, but I didn't have the words to come out. So we're moving on. <laughs> hmm. Sure, it's but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my what was my objection? Chopped liver? Sh shut up. Shut up, <laughs> Mr. Small Penis Lawyer. <laughs> but but it was there! A scarf! No, not that, but something red. Really? Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Are you sure about that? Yeah, right. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? I was thinking that, Emma. The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. She, she mentioned the muffler? Why would she... Uh, in what context? Wait, did you grab her and she's like, RED MUFFLER! RED MUFFLER! <laughs> <laughs> The chief prosecutor made to, the chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. I mean, kind of. N no thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. <laughs> the chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Uh, an oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. Predator to this one. A leopard woman. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you tried. Uh, yes, I did. Yep. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. All right, because, yeah, she did mention before that, yeah, she went to arrest her immediately. So this is where I'm thinking the phone might come into play, because she did call her sister. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm just run behind a position off to the side. Um, no, I don't. I mean, not on that one. I, let, yeah, let, I quickly call her, explained her, arrested her on the spot. I think... It's either this statement or maybe one of the others, like the next statement. Not one. Okay. I think it might be this one. Let's try it. Nope. I. Damn. It could be one of the other statements. I do think it's the phone. I don't know. What if we press her, maybe? Or more info. Ooh, that's a good point. We, I haven't, I haven't done that. Yeah, let's start pressing. So where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. 
That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I feel like that that should have been right. So yeah, try pressing that. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only thirty feet away from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe you should press her for more details. I'd like to see this on the floor plans just to be safe. Wait, so there was a fence. What, did she hop the fence? Yeah, right? <laughs> the Lunchland car was... She was a vi visitor, but she was parked in B-Block. So you witnessed the murder from here? I would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But... There was a chain link fence in front of you? Or, but there was a chain link fence in front of you. That was the judge, whatever. I went over it, of course. Yeah, so she hopped a, was a 30 foot fence? Right. Amazing, the cough up queen, lunch lady athlete indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gone to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about 9 feet high, too. Oh, it's 9 feet high. Wait, then why okay. did I think... Or maybe it's 30 feet long. So how did my sky not get away? Okay. Um... Well, that's nonsense, but... Okay, okay, let's press the muffler line. Yeah. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word. So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talked it to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her okay. phone. Uh, Here we go. Oh, there Here we, we go. go. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Her phone. She can't mean. By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately. My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to, to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. Things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Okay, uh, the word muffler was overheard during a call me to Emma at 18. Okay. So, well, how she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell instead. Uh, but I guess the ancient story was futile. Uh, press her on this. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! Uh -huh, I was going to ask the same thing! I'll only say this one time, Rookie, so listen close. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. 
She picked up the phone. Uh, she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. During that time... Oh, sorry. And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence? It was easy, I just did it in one jump! <laughs> <laughs> then, when I boldly grabbed her arm... The chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? Hmm. So I, this makes me think I have to present something here. Uh... Is it maybe the Wait. phone? What? What's up? I'm trying to think. Oops, not what I meant to do. Well, you're trying to, uh, you're trying to do this statement? Uh, yeah, I think it's something with this statement. Cause he- Alright, um, I don't think it would be the cell- What about the floor plans? Let's see. Yeah, Let maybe it's just like, yeah, you couldn't have jumped over that fence in time. Yeah. Yep. I don't know, that's still, like, so freaking hard to believe. She hopped the freaking fence. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lamas Guy. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Yes, of course. That's how this works. <laughs> well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it up. Cough it all up. Ahem. Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. Oh, because it's on the other side of the, yeah. the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hadn't even. I wasn't even thinking about that. <laughs> I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B-Block, you couldn't have seen it. What? Yeah, I didn't think about that. I was still uh, held up on the fence. <laughs> yeah, which is still nonsense, but... Order, order, what is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. God damn it, Phoenix. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Damn, so fast. dumb. <laughs> <clears throat> That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question. Okay. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Well, it would be quicker just to list the things that weren't lies. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about. Hmm. What she saw, where she's. Well, the phone thing is true. Um, the phone thing we know is true. So it's not what she saw. Where she saw it, the order of events. I think it's where she saw it. Because. I, yeah. We know the phone call did happen after the murder. I'm pretty sure it but, did. But she, she did say she saw her trying to use the, um. The emergency phone. So yes. I guess that, that's what would fall into what she saw. No, because that's probably true. 
she probably did see that because the point I'm the point I'm making is she was on the other side. She wasn't coming from B block. She was yeah. already in A block. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, she, she wasn't. She wasn't gonna jump over the fence. Yeah, no, that's so, fucking impossible. It's, yeah, so it's got to be where she's. It's got to be it. where. Miss Guy tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant? What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie. I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location. Oh, there we go. I guess the stream just kind of froze for me. Yeah, now, that's a okay. pointless life I ever heard one. Yeah, because it was just, like, stuck on the previous one. Oh, uh, okay. For, like, a hot few seconds there. Before you call my life pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from, was, from where Miss Star witnessed this crime was here. Uh, well, I would have been the security room, yeah. I mean, yep. that's the, really the only one place I can think of. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security room is the underground parking lot. It, in the uh, underground parking lot, it's well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness not being part of the prosecutor's office couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend at the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could be turned. Today, a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order, order. Witness. What have you done? You should know bet. You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. Guilty? She talking about Miss Skye? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. This photograph... Uh, this photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. The truth still stands. It still stands. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? Also, I didn't think about this, but it's like if she took the photo from the other side of the fence, too, it's like you would have seen the fence in the photo, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I, that, I didn't think of that either. <laughs> yeah. If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? Me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. 
but she lied and said she saw it from Bebaw. It must make a vital difference. But what? What would change? Angle of view to the crime, distance to the crime, difference in lighting. I think it's the angle, because that picture was clearly not taken from the guard station. Mm -hmm. That was, like, she was definitely, like, yeah. right there. Also, if she was in the security guard station, then there's no way she could have gotten down to the the block to apprehend her. Yeah. Just in case. Hmm. Why, the angle at which she saw the crime occur would, ch would change. The angle? What do you mean? Uh, um, well, security guard station is on the second floor, and, um, she would have sort of, she would have sort of a more 3D view of the crime? And this is important, why? Um, I hope you'd like to reconsider, Mr. Wright. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, crap. Okay. I had to do it then. Okay, so it wasn't that. You making sense to me? Mm. Fine. Yes. So wait, wait, which one did you choose? It was the angle, angle, right? Yeah. What about? I guess try um. Or uh, Yeah. Let's see. Distance and difference in lighting. I mean, I would assume it's it, distance. It, it's got to. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's black and white. Why would there <laughs> difference in well, lighting? The, that's just for the. Photo? Uh, I don't know. It could be. Eh, we'll try, try distance, and we'll see. Yeah. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection! My condolences, Mr. Wright. But one look at the floor plans, and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. Oh, and a partition, yep. and yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach reach the scene of the crime. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there? The scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky. Also, can, are we not going to bring up the fact that she doesn't actually have the power to arrest people? Yeah. <laughs> the citizens arrest. Well, witness. You. Yes. You ordered the squid wheels, right? What the fuck is that? Oh my god. Quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. Like, that was rubber bands, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looked like it. <laughs> I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm. Boysenberry for the boyfriend. Thanks, it Judge. Wasn't in the it wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass walled station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked and I couldn't open it. So I had to go through this visitor's par uh, parking in B Block. That's quite a detour. And that's when I hopped the fence. <laughs> it took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Oh, well, uh, there's something we can contradict. Yeah. For five minutes? <laughs> hmm. This changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. 
I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. Okay. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. <laughs> I prefer the fapoon. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh -oh. The judge is getting bought out. Mr. Wright, we have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Yeah. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest? Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time if you like it al dente. What does that mean? I've got lunch boxes at Thai Pasta and Tanats, rookie. Five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey, don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. <laughs> but you have the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Guy dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. <laughs> Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth is the next witness ready to go. Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on her account, on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. That was too close. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to poise off on me. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo, a triple dagger! Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Yeah, wow, oh man, food. he's being paid yeah, off food. like hell. That you pay off the judge in food. Apparently that's the trick. <laughs> Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at this crime scene. And now... For the matter of the victim's shoe, I... Did I not bring this up? No, no, no you didn't. What? Yeah, that's why he got fired. <laughs> yeah, really. Stuff. Two types of blood were found on this shoe. Wait, how would you know? Did you get it tested yourself? Yeah, what? One was, of course, the victim's. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Alana Skye. Why would her blood be on the shoe? Yeah, what the f- This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. 
It just makes it more freaking confusing. What? There was blood found on that shoe? I Lunchland, for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. I thought you had one. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule 1, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence. At least, for the time being. It, is that right, Mr. Ray? Seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. How convenient. <laughs> Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> uh, that face. Oh, Edgeworth. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You could at least study some evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against your witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Okay. Uh, now to the matter of the victim's shoe down. Here's our blood type. So this is just about the shoe. That's pretty sly. Hiding evidence like that. There's nothing sly about a lawyer using the law as a weapon. In any case, science is always on our side. Don't forget, scientific investigations is the wave of the future. Hmm. Maybe you should investigate this evidence a little more closely. Okay, cool. So. I guess take a look at the shoes. Yes. Oh, also yes. save right now, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a look at it first and then I'll save. Okay, so. There's blood here, too! On the sole of the shoe? It's gotta be the victim's. He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood. It's horrible! Hmm. Blood might be an important clue. Okay, let's see. This blood. It's my sister's, right? It appears so. On his right hand was bandaged when I saw her in jail. Oh, interesting. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. Poor sis. Okay, I think that's it. So he stepped in a pool of his own blood. Interesting. Okay, now save. Uh, 
Uh, mentioned five minutes ago when I wasn't looking at the crime scene, and out of the matter of the victim shoot, and an operator is up. Oh, shoot. One was, of course, victims, and the other blood type. Oh, this... Okay. Uh, let me press here. So, you brought it to the forensics department? If you're going to submit something as evidence in the court, you need it approved. Wait, so did she just take the shoe and said, oh yeah, I'm gonna take this and do it myself? Get, it's what, what it her? seems like. Oh my. Do that evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert. And she got away with her little coup because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have bloodstains on it. Well, the man was the man was stabbed after all. <clears throat> Why was his blood on the bottom of the shoe? That's the question. I mean. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. As I said, there were two types of blood found on this shoe. Hmm. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie. Huh. Well, speak up. Uh, well... Blood comes in four types. A, B, O, and A, B. However... You can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. It's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we could differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there. Which means we can... Which it means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. That's pretty specific. If I had a little more time... If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's a very little doubt it could be anyone's but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm. So the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. Okay, so... Actually, let's press this one, too. Can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's in enough, she's in enough hot water to make the whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright. Do you, or don't you, have a problem with this shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes, you're still a young rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? What was the problem with this evidence? Um... I'm assuming it's gotta be the blood on the bottom. Like he stepped in his own blood? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm. Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? Um... Uh, 
Uh, oh, we gotta achieve something else? Yes. Uh, let's see. Okay. We check the, um... Autopsy? We check the photo. Like, would the photo show maybe his body positioning? I mean, this photo? We're... Not even in this photo. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe the autopsy. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. I'm guessing your shoe has blood on it too. You just shot yourself in the foot. Ugh. Would you like a grinder? Or a grind from the heel of my boot, Mr. Wright? Okay. I figured. Uh... Yes, because that's... Okay. I wonder if we even want to go down that Okay, so it's... Forget you pressed... It was when I pressed this that led us down there, down that route. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's gotta be something too. Yeah, I, I really think this is a thing. Like, there's definitely something about this. Question, of course, is... What is the problem with the bottom of the shoe? Is there another photo, or is that the only photo you have? Uh, well, I just have the floor plans. The f yeah, no, that's not gonna help. After the crime was committed. Yeah, but where was the body then? Like, I mean, yeah, she... Hmm. Okay, I think I got it. I think it is... Actually, it's funny. Okay, because I, I, I do have a thing up, so... I was commenting through it, and I think I know what it wants me to do. Uh, it's, fun it's funny, because you, you asked about the photo, right? And you asked, mm -hmm. does it show where his body is in, in the thing and no it actually doesn't and that's kind of the point because where is the blood if if he stepped in blood where's all the blood yeah the problem lies in the footprint the the footprint note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha! As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about the shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. And where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Bell witness? What? Huh? I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright. But... It's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. Someone cleaned it up? I don't know. <laughs> the, janitor the janitorial staff at, at this parking lot is not really on par. Yeah, they, they clean everything. <laughs> hey, I don't know why it's not there. 
I'm just good at finding contradictions. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm not solve detective. solve problems. Yeah. Like... Just find out, I just tell the people they're lying. I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. Yeah, so it seems like uh, Edgeworth is like trying to play both sides. Like he's on our side, but just like, you know, but like kind of like, like he's uh, creating a facade, it seems. You know, like well, he, it seems like yeah. he's trying to uh, like, you know, like be on the wi uh, witness's side, but actually just helping us instead. I think it's Here. just I think it's more that because this he did this in previous cases, too. I think it's more that he like he he realizes when when shit's off, he actually cares more about the truth than winning mm -hmm. the case in some of these cases. Wh what are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. You want me to read this? Uh, I mean, yeah. All right. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. <laughs> A leopard woman. Wait, you want me to rare again? I, you, don't, you don't have to. <laughs> it's fine. I, I forgot that one was going to be in there. I thought that was strange. That, that was a strange thing for the normally cool headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that? Hmm. It was filled with the witness's blood. <laughs> I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. So apparently you're not the lowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness! Well, well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright. You want to know the reason she kicked it over? The real reason? Aha, uh -huh. you don't mean. Yes. The suspect knocked over the oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the blood stain that would become evidence against her. I don't think it'd wash everything away though. Like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it would there would still be traces of it. Also, why was there an oil drum filled with water there conveniently? Yeah, that ties things up quite nicely. The blood stains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. And after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. That reminds me, this guy's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she'd cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. M Mr. Wright, do something, please! W what? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. But... Enough. There's no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. 
She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Little girl, what did you just say? Uh huh? M me? Did you just say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? W well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well. I thought you had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox? A lunchbox called Evidence? Wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. Objection. The time for deliberations is past. Any further comments, and you will be held in contempt of court. Is that so is it that is something the judge says? Not yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness! Your threats will scare the cough up queen. Look at this. A photograph. I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in this photo! Hey, it's clearly wet. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I... I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. Sorry, Mia. Uh, I guess that's Mia. Yeah. Right, wet or not. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well, this time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Objection! Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand out my verdicts in peace anymore? <laughs> yeah, let me just jump the gun. Come on. It's fun. Whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it will be too late. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. Think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. <laughs> Just wing I it. Yeah, really. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. Okay, let's see. So, yeah, there is... I do see the blood There's a the muffler. This is, there's a muffler in the muffler. Oh! Hey, there's something in the muffler. I guess... Nice inside him. I guess choose a muffler, then? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The problem in this photograph is here. 
What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor? You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or a scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part on a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system. Pipe. I see. And I see. What's that suspicious-looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm. So what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I just drive around with uh, shit, you know, in my uh, muffler too. You know, I do all yep. the time. It's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. W what? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to this case. Whoops. Okay. I just hit the button. It, it, it makes, can you save or no? Uh, I cannot save, but it's the phone. It's the phone? What do you yeah. think? The word muffler. Oh, muffler. She already mentioned oh, that yep. she heard okay. it say it on the call. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's why I had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler? Ugh. Could it be the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh? Well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. We leave any question unanswered here. We do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once, and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Phew. That was close. But we made it, at least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30-minute recess. It's lunchtime, after all. He's still hungry? Hooray! We survived! Yay! <laughs> oh, boy.